Let's there you go. Let's, we got so much information, let's hit the lights. So again, this is uh, some, this is a little website that has somewhere between three and five posts a week on new things or maybe things you didn't know. So it's a really quick way to get a little bit of education um, throughout the, you know, on a daily basis. So you can go and you can look at this and if you're interested, read about it or watch the video that's there. Like I said, three to five posts a week. It does, it won't take you more than five to 15 minutes max, but I'm thinking it's probably more like five to 10 minutes. And so that's a nice website to go to. And I've talked about this book before, so there's that. Let's, uh, I'll take you to the next slide. Now this is some shortcuts in, uh, keyboard shortcuts that I use, talk about in this class or other classes through this third class. So. We may have talked them in, about them in class one or two, and today I'm gonna to add to it and we'll have three, and I don't know if we'll gain any more next week, but as of right now, this is the ones that I will have talked about or will be talking about tonight. So um, we're gonna start in actually, I'm gonna to go to uh, Lightroom now, and I wanna start out, get my notes here, I want to talk about some of the stuff that we maybe covered too quickly last week or that we didn't cover. Maybe I accidentally forgot to tell you about it, and I think I did. So I want to go and I want to cover a few things uh, from last week. So I am going to bring up a different picture here. All right, so I want to open this in the develop module. So I'm going to hit the letter D. I could go up and hit the word. And here's this picture, and I am going to do a little bit of work on it. I'm going to darken it just a little bit, because if you can see the computer's uh, page on this, uh, it is a little bit light at the top, so I'm going to drop my exposure. So somewhere in here, well, when I do this, you'll notice that it gets very dark down where it's shady. So. Um, in order to show the information that I want you to learn on this one, we're going to drop a radial filter. So I'm going to go up to the menu up here, and I'm going to hit that circle, and I'm going to pull down. You'll see the uh, cross on my uh, cursor. I'm going to pull down a radial filter right through here. So I'm going to. I want it to be a long oval. So I'll pull that down. Now the adjustment that I'm going to make, I want it to be a little. A little bit lower in the image, so I'll pull it down. I want to cover this area, but I want to cover inside. So remember, this is a little bit of a refresher. I'm going to hit the check mark box in the invert area, and over here now I'm going to bring up my exposure a little bit inside that circle, and I'm going to bring up some shadows. And we've got this new. I updated today, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Uh, texture bar, I'm going to pull that up because that does some really cool stuff. Um, I'll just lighten it just a little bit more. So because we're on this screen, let's just go a little bit more extended with my thing. And I think I, it's a little harsh and it's not covered quite all the areas. So I'm going to widen this out just a bit. And I am going to soften my edges with the feather button feather slider over. Now I think this picture needs more work and so I could drop another radial filter say over on these clothes that are on this mannequin and then I would have to redial in all my sliders but I want to show you because I don't think I talked about this this last week. If I hover over here and I do a right click I will get this menu pop up and it says duplicate here. I want to duplicate this radial filter. So I'm going to click on it. Now you'll notice it got substantially brighter, but you don't see another filter sitting next to it. That's because it's stacked exactly on top of it. I do that. I did it again. Um, <laughs> my thumb in this task has hit the button. I didn't even do that. Okay. Um, I think I still have my duplicate. We'll find out here in a second. It looks like I do. So it is there. It's just stacked right on top of the other one. So I'm going to click in 
can dra drag it over to where I want it. Click. I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to place it on this area, and I'll move to the side, and you can see that I have lightened that area, and we'll suppose that I like it fine. You can see this is the active one. It has the dark circle in it, but as my cursor is on the window, you'll notice that the other radial is still there. If I hover on it, it shows it. It doesn't show the line, but it shows where it's it's uh, what it's affecting, and you can tell that it's there because it's got the grayed out circle. Well, let's say we want another one. Maybe we want another one of these up high. I'm going to click, right click. It gets that window. I'm going to duplicate it again. Again, I'm going to click and drag it into place, and let's put it up here. Now it's a little bit oversized, so please realize that you can shrink the size of this radial filter even though you've duplicated, it doesn't mean you have to keep it exactly the same. Now, if I sh hold down the shift key and click and drag this up, it will drag it in the same proportion that it was. So I'm going to drag it up. And then we'll suppose maybe it's just a little brighter than we want. So let's bring those shadows back down. Maybe we need to bring the highlights down. Maybe it's even a little bit too exposed. And uh, we'll say that that's better. So now I can go ahead and do the same thing. If I want to duplicate this one, I'll hit duplicate. And what I want you to see is as I pull this down, we'll place it here. This has the same information as this one after I changed it. So it doesn't have the same information as the first one. It duplicated what was in this one and it duplicated it by size. Again, you can tweak it if you want, but please note that you can duplicate these radials and place them very quickly so you don't have to remember, oh, I had my exposure up 1.04, I had my highlights down to minus two, my, and my sliders for my shadows are down to four, and I have to redo all these sliders with each one that I place. You can just duplicate them and put them in place. So I, that's what I wanted to show you. The same thing works for grade, the graduated filter, and it works for adjustment brushes. So know that you can right-click on the pin and duplicate, duplicate. There's two other, three other things you can do in there, but I tend to do the other ones a different way. I think it's faster. But duplicate this seems to be the best way to do that. All right, so let's move on to the next topic, and that's about cropping. So let me bring in another image. This one I've been talking about doing for the last um, two weeks, so we're going to do it right at the beginning of class so it doesn't get bumped again. And I want this image, and we'll go into the develop module. So we have this image, and we're going to go up here to this bar where it has the adjustment tools, and the one on the far left is the crop tool, so I'm gonna open that, and I think it's reset. No, it's not, I'm gonna reset that, so it's as bad as it really is. You can see how crooked the horizon line is on here, and we need to fix that, because horizon lines, particularly at the ocean, should never be crooked. Water doesn't run uphill or downhill like this unless it's a waterfall. So. Let's look at the box that I opened when I clicked on the, on the crop tool. And you'll notice the first part of it says aspect ratio, and, or it says aspect. And then you'll see the word original. And then there's a little, uh, looks like a padlock. So you should go ahead, even if you don't want to crop yours, if you've got it open, go ahead and open this so you have a good view of it. And you can click along with me. So I'm going to talk about this padlock first. If it looks like it's locked right now, I'm gonna go down to this bottom left corner and you'll see a double arrow down there. So I'm gonna click and move it around. Now I am trying to move my cursor, but it's staying that aspect ratio. Why? Because that padlock is locked. So I'm gonna go back up here, I'm gonna reset here. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna unlock that padlock. And if I come down and I grab that same corner, you can see how I can move this all around into any aspect ratio I want. So that's a neat 
<coughs> thing that you can do. So you can either have it locked or unlocked. If it's not staying in your aspect ratio and you want it to, just make sure you lock this and then go back to make sure it says original in this area. How do you do that? Well, there's a double set of arrows to the right of the word original, and if you click on it, it will open a panel. And in this panel, you'll see as shot in original, and for a lot of them, that's about the same. And then the next one says custom. We're not gonna click on the word custom. It will just change automatically. But if you need it to say original, you can click on that one. Um, but what I want you to notice, especially if you're looking at your screen, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier is there's a faint gray line right under the word custom, and then there's another faint gray line right under the two by three. All these numbers in here are print sizes that are kind of common. Uh, so you, if you want a common size known in prints, here's where you go. And if I say I wanted this to be an eight by 10, I will just click on this one that says eight by 10, and it will give me an eight by 10 aspect ratio. Now it cuts off the size when the sides, excuse me, when it's a hor vertical. No, this is a horizontal. <laughs> um, it will cut off the sides, but maybe it's cutting off an area you don't want to lose. Maybe you can lose it all on the left or all on the right. It took a little from each in this case. You can grasp this with it. You notice a hand is on the cursor. I can click and drag my picture behind the grid that popped up. So the grid is stationary, but the picture moves. Now I can also decide to go down to one of these bottom corners or top corner, it doesn't matter, and I can resize it. So maybe I don't want that much of the picture showing, I just want that aspect ratio, and then I can pull it around as I want it. Let's reset that a minute. I'm gonna come back up here and open that back up. And you'll notice that some of the Numbers look real familiar. This two by three, unless you've reset your camera to take a different uh, aspect ratio, this is what your camera probably is taking. And so if you need it to come back to a two by three to get as much of your screen there, you can click that or hit reset and it'll go all the way back to its native setting. Now the next set right under here, there's another gray line. And then there's under the 16 by 10, there's a gray line. These three are video aspect ratios. So it doesn't mean you can't use it on your still, it just means that these tend to be the layouts that are used in video more than these. These are print layouts, these are videos, but you'll see one of them is a 16 by nine, and that's one that we commonly refer to at club, we'll say, I think this image might've looked better if it was cropped 16 by nine. Well, here it is. Again, it's not 16 inches by nine inches. It's just proportionately a 16 by nine proportion or aspect ratio. And you can see it clicks it into more of that landscape movie cinematic look. And again, I can move it up and down in order to place my picture where I want it. I'm gonna reset this for a minute. I'm gonna go back into that menu. And you'll notice at the bottom of this one, it says enter custom. So I'm gonna click on that. This hasn't been used, this is the club's computer. Now you will find that it will remember some of these. So if I wanted this to be a panorama and I wanted the, it to be three parts wide by one part tall, if I, where it's highlighted one, if I type in a three, and then I click OK, you'll see that now I have a three by one aspect ratio. Again, I can move my image around inside that box. I can even draw that box in from the side and make it smaller and move it around as I choose if I wanted to do that. Now I'm gonna reset it again and get it back and I'm gonna go back into that same menu and you'll notice now that down below there is that three by one aspect ratio that we just custom made and it will stay there. I think it'll hold like four of those custom sizes and then they start dropping off. So you can make them and then remake them. So if they don't stay there, if they stay there, they're just a click away. And if they uh, have disappeared from this uh, drop down menu, then you can just remake them by going to this enter custom 
and you can dial in whatever numbers you want. I just happen to have one three by one, but if we wanted that to be a 10 by 13, you can type that in and then you will have that aspect ratio. And again, if I go back up to that menu, you will see that that one is also at the bottom of the list. Okay, so let's leave it as it is for right now. Um, now, if we're looking at the same panel for the crop menu. Somebody else in another room just turned our lights on. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'll get it, Jay. So we'll go ahead and talk even, you, you might have this open so you'll be able to see. The next part of this panel is talking about um, the angle and straightening out my problem here with this slanted horizon. So in this case, like so often happens within Lightroom and Photoshop, there's more than one way to do this. And in this case, there's four different ways that we can do adjusting the horizon. And one of them is simply to take my cursor just slightly off to one of the sides. It could be top and bottom or on the side. And you'll notice if my cursor is on there, there's something different on the cursor. And if I, as I move it over to the side, it turns into a curved double arrow. If I click and drag, you'll notice that the grid gets smaller than it was without it. So it gets smaller and I can pull this down and realign my horizon by using those grid lines. And then when I think I've got it straight, I release it. And if I'm done at this point, I can either go down to the bottom corner of the picture where it says done. Oops, I went a little too far. And, or I can go up here and hit close and it will close. I'll just open that back up. Or I could actually click right on that icon and it'll close also. So that's one way to achieve changing the angle of your picture. Now it will not go all the way. No matter how far you try to turn it, it won't go to get that uh, grid in the box to go perfectly vertical. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it. So if you were say wanting to turn this her, uh, horizontal image into a vertical, if you simply hit the X key, it will go to a vertical format. And you can then move it to the way you want it. If you want to go back, we'll hit the X key again. Now you'll notice it went smaller than it was before. It's the same size as it was as a vertical. It's just in horizontal now. But if we want to, we can just expand that by pulling it out. Oops, we're unlocked. So you can see it was unlocked and what happens? So if I lock it, then it'll keep that proportion and I can pull it out to be as big as I want it. Let's reset this so I can show you another way to do that. And that's, there's this auto button and it works very slick if there's a definite horizontal or a definite vertical. Not so good sometimes when it's got a no, you know, it just doesn't know what to grab. So if I just click on it, you'll see it straightened it out just as quick as it can. And um, it's great. So that's another way. And if it doesn't work for you, it didn't get it to be straight in your mind. Um, maybe you wanted to straighten up something then it was looking at a different line. Then just reset it. And you can manually slide it over with the slider. Again, that uh, grid, the uh, grid gets smaller and I can move it until the grid line is parallel to the shoreline. And then I could be happy with that and I could close it down and move on. Or I will reset it one more time. There's this little tool over here. And it's kind of like I told you, sometimes there are these little tools and if you hover over this circle, you'll see it goes from a dark circle to a lighter circle. And if you click on it, it becomes part of your cursor. And if I go over to the shoreline on the far left and I click and I drag it, oops, that's a right-handed person with a cast on the arm having a, oops. I'm gonna drag it, so I'm gonna start at the left again. Click. 
and drag it across and put it on that shoreline on the right side, let go, and again, it straightened up the shoreline. So those are four different ways to straighten an image. Let me go back down. I'm going to reset this one. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab one more picture. Would you suggest that to, before you crop a picture that you uh, align it first so that you... Yeah, that's an interesting question, and I wanted to talk to you about that. So let me do that, uh, address that real quickly. Sometimes in a picture where the horizon is crooked, I can't stand it, and I have to change it. <laughs> so that is something that I will straighten out with some exceptions. So sometimes if I just can't work without it being straightened up, I will straighten it up. Maybe it's temporary or maybe it's all the time. Um, the reason I say that I may not leave it there and I don't do it routinely and I don't necessarily get it into the exact size that I want it. Suppose I wanted the image to be a one by one crop, so a square crop, and I straightened out that horizon. If at that point I thought I did my edit in Lightroom and I wanted to take it into Photoshop, and I did, it will take in, say, we'll say that one by one crop, and I can do whatever I want to my image in Photoshop and then, or whatever software it happens to be when it leaves Lightroom and goes into another uh, software. And I can do this edit to it, and I bring it back into Lightroom. What happens is you've lost all the information that was outside that crop box. So if you decided, well, I liked my edit, but now I think I want it to be a two by three crop, and I want to use some of that area that I cropped out. Sorry, Charlie, it's gone. So it's better to go ahead and do all your editing prior, even if it's that's outside Lightroom, do it all prior to cropping because then you can crop it later and you will have the ability to crop it any way you want and come back and recrop it and still get all of the image that's out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, the question is So Lightroom is a non-destructive and so you can always go back and redo. But uh, so once you say done within there, it just means you're closing out that panel essentially and moving on and working in and if you can work on a different area, but you can go right back in here. Let's just do it so you can I'm see. I'm just going to ask you if it's later on you were going to explain how to go back and recover something. Okay, so let's just do that. We'll just hit auto here. So this is a vertical. Uh, it's got more vertical lines that it's going to notice than horizontal. So we'll just click the auto button here. And it straightens it up and we'll say, yeah, that's good. I'm done. So I'll hit the, actually hit the done button. And now I will say, uh, I've actually already done. So we'll do a little bit more. We'll just pull this. Uh, we'll make a really noticeable cha maybe change to it. Actually, maybe we'll go to black and white. That'll be a noticeable change. So, and I'll bump up the contrast here. So. So we'll see, okay, so we've done a major change here. And so now I wanna go in and let's go, and I don't know that I like the way it straightened it maybe. So there it is, you can see it's all there. I can reset my crop and you can see the entire image is still there. So I could go in and say, I want a one by one crop and I do need to straighten it. So we'll straighten it. And now I'm gonna close it, I'm done. And I'm going to go in and do a few more things. We'll say I drop a vignette on this. And we'll just make some moves so it gets really dark and noticeable. Okay, so now I've done that, and I'm going to say done. I'll click the word done. And now I come in and I say, I wish it was color. All you have to do is hit the color button. And it's it's right there. Now the vignette's still on it, but I can go in and I can take that away if I want. So I come in here and I can either turn it off to see if I want to keep it or undo it. So I can turn it off and on. Or I could readjust what I've done to the vignette. All I have to do is re-hit this pin. So it activates that. And now I could maybe make it not as severe, but keep it. Or maybe I want to totally get rid of it. And so then I just hit the delete key. 
and it's gone. So you can totally go back and undo anything that has been done to it. It is now back to the original. And if you think there's more things done to it and it's not totally back to the original and you still want it to undo everything, there's this reset button down in the bottom right hand corner. If you hit that, it'll take away everything that's been done to this image from. If you hit the one right, the one that says previous. Yes. How far does that take it back? One step? Or one step. And actually, we're going to talk a little bit more about this previous button. Um, I think it's next week. So I won't get too much into that. But yeah, you can do a one step back. And then I'll show you how it works a little bit more next week. All right, so we'll go ahead and close this one. And we're going to go back in. We did a real fast um, thing last week because we were running out of time and we were talking about exporting. And I don't think I gave it as much information as I should have. So I want to talk a little bit more about export. So I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to hit export. And it's going to open this window. So this is the full window. And we set up our preset last week, and it's active right now. But what if you were exporting an image and you didn't want it to go into this preset that we made? You wanted it to go somewhere in totally different, into a different folder. I wanted to talk to you about how you do it. So again, I think this window is set up just fine. The thing is, we need to choose a new location. So you would just hit the word choose, and it will bring you into your file system. And you just need to know your computer and how you tend to file, and you can decide where you're going to place the new folder, where you want this image to go. Is it going into an existing folder that's on your desktop? or an existing folder that's in my pictures, or an existing folder that's on an external hard drive. You just need to find where you want to place this image and put it there. If there is no existing in, uh, folder, then you can make one by going up to, say, New Folder. And if you're on a Mac, it's in the bottom left-hand corner. And you would click that, and you would put that new folder where you want it to be. And then once you know where you want to put it, you will just say, um, we're going to open up the desktop and see if we can find another. I'll just put it, I'm going to make this up. I'm going to put it in this Lightroom folder. So I'm going to select that folder. So now you can see it changed from what it was said before, because before it said Riverbend um, resizing. And now it says Lightroom. So we've chosen a different location for it to go into. We can now choose to rename it or not rename it by checking this button. If you don't click this, it won't rename it. It'll leave it whatever it's named now. If we want to rename it, I just simply check that. And now it gives me some options as to how I want to rename it. And you can see an example of how it looks. So right now, this image is named Chicago Buckingham Fountain. It's number 10. It's a JPEG. If I go over here and say I want to custom name it one of two, or if I want to custom name it with an original file number, let's pick that one for now. You can see that it, it, it puts that in there and now it gives me a text box I can type in. So I could come in here and I could type in Chicago and you can see it gives me an example of how it will look. So you can change it as you want. Now that's with this. If you choose to go in here and do, say, custom name sequence, you still get this box where you can type in whatever custom text you want, but you can renumber it, and it gives you a number to start with. You can use one if you choose, or you can use any number by simply clicking on it and typing in whatever number you want. All right, and you can see the example here. That's what it's going to look like. Now, I'm not going to talk about video. That would be Scott's division, not mine. <laughs> I've never downloaded a or exported a video. So let's look at file settings. 
If you want it to be a JPEG, then you can export as a JPEG. If you don't want it to be a JPEG, you have other options. There's an arrow here, click on it. You can see it can be a PSD, a TIFF, a DNG. So whatever you want it to be, we'll leave it as it is. If you're going for print or you're sending it to club or you're sending it to a lot of different places, it's probably gonna to need to be sRGB, but you have other options. So you can pick whichever one works. Um, for the situation you're in, if you're sending it to a lab, you'll want to see if it really needs to be sRGB or maybe it needs to be one of those other ones. Sometimes they change. I always send things out at 100% quality. Um, somebody may have a different opinion, but that's what I do. Now, you can resize it or not. Maybe you want to send out a full res image. You don't even need to resize it. Just leave it like this. But if you want to resize it, you have options. This is the one that works great for club. If you want to determine that it's an eight by 10, you can get dimensions and then you can type in eight by 10, but this says pixels. So you would want to go in and hit inches. Oops. So that's when you'd say eight by 10. And Pick your resolution. It says 240 here, but if you want it to be 300, you can type in 300. Um, sharpen for screen, or you can sharpen for matte paper, glossy paper. You can choose low, standard, or high quality. Um, you can choose how much metadata you leave on there. You can have other options. Um, Watermarking, we're not going to talk about it in here, but if sometime you make a watermark, you can store it in here and it's pretty nice. You can click on it. Matter of fact, when you see the name, uh, somebody's name in the bottom corner or wherever they happen to put it on a picture, when you see it in uh, on display at club, they can you, you can do it this way by doing a watermark. And I'd like to be able to show you that sometime, but that's kind of a combination Photoshop, Lightroom shop, uh, class. So. We'll maybe have to have a special evening for that. Yeah. This is one I've, uh, I've never quite figured out, and that's the output sharpening, okay? Yeah. When you sharpen for screen, you are actually putting more sharpening in the image than the image that you have already perfectly sharpened. Yeah. Now, I can understand the other selections for print because you do want to tend to over sharpen for print. But I never sharpen for the screen. You know, I have sometimes and I have it other times, and I honestly can say I've never noticed a whole lot of difference. It's putting a little bit more, but you know, like you said, if you're doing it and you like the way it looks on your screen, it's probably going to be fine for whatever screen you're seeing it on. So um, if you haven't sharpened it within Lightroom or in Photoshop, maybe you want to add some sharpening as it comes out. Uh, printing. Uh, if you're not familiar with printing, you know, there was the option to choose matte or glossy paper. Matte, when you print matte paper, it tends to spread out more, so you need a little bit heavier uh, sharpening on it. Glossy doesn't require quite as much. Again, I tend to sharpen in when I'm getting it ready to go. So I'm sharpening already in Lightroom, is generally where I sharpen. So. You can make that decision. You know, some of this stuff, I'm telling you what they are. You don't have to do it, or you can choose to do it. And I know, I think I put this in your preset, but if you want to take it out, by all means, take it out. Um, Post-processing, I do nothing. Yes. One, one place where I do like the output sharpening is I, I take a lot of pictures that I'm not going to necessarily show at club. They might be for an organization or something like that. And instead of taking the time to sharpen every single individual picture, when I do my export, I'll export sharpen and just do them all at one shot because they're going to be low, small JPEGs that are going to go in a newsletter or something like that. And they're not worth my time and effort to put a whole lot of. So, so that, that's I think that's a great example. Comes, is pretty handy. Think also if you change the size of it in this export, it helps to have it in there sometimes too. So I think, yeah, great example. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over real quickly is you'll notice this says put in subfolder and it has an untitled export. 
You know, if we were doing the riverbed sizing thing, I'll click back on that, and you'll maybe you wanted to add a folder inside of this folder that said maybe May images, you could do that right here by typing in May here, and then you kind of separate it out so you're not just putting it into the whole big folder. So that was the other thing I wanted to mention. Is there any other questions or comments? Actually, with that preset, you're going to make an empty folder in there all the time. If you have it, yeah, because I had this checked. If this was not checked, then it wouldn't have been. Right. So because when we made our, yeah, we made the preset last week, if yours was also checked, I didn't comment on it, but I know this one was. So if yours was also, and this is, so you can check it by simply clicking on that word. River Bend resizing and see what comes up. And you can go ahead and you would then say <coughs> May uh, 2019. And then it'll it'll take care of it for you. So it's kind of a, a, a way, a nice way to separate things out. I don't tend to, if I'm going to export three images or more than one image at a time, I don't rename. I'll rename it after it gets into the folder because otherwise, you could if you were using a sequence, but that's not the way it works. That's not the way we name for clubs. So um, I don't generally rename in. But the, if you if you export it and it goes in a certain folder, and then you are you saying that you go to your file which you did and rename, and it. rename it there? Yes. Now the one thing about exporting, and I think maybe where you're going, maybe I should let you finish your thought is Lightroom does not remember where it exported these pictures to. Like it remembers where you file things that you've imported to Lightroom, but what you've exported to Lightroom is not in the Lightroom catalog. Okay. So you can go ahead and you could add it, I think, to the catalog. Yes. But it's not, uh, that was not something that we checked. Let me bring that back up add to this catalog. So if I wanted to add it to a catalog in Lightroom, then it would remember. But until I have this checked, it doesn't know that it's there. So you can rename it all you want to. Does that make sense? But if you did add it to the catalog, then you would not want to rename it outside of Lightroom. You would go into the Lightroom library and rename it there. And we will talk about renaming here shortly. But now you've got two copies of that picture. Yes, and you will want you, you probably use. want to rename it because they're different sizes. So you so you can tell which which is which. Is there any other questions or comments on that? All right. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you about, and I'm gonna look over here. You can't see the bar on this screen. Over here, like if you were looking down in this area, on this computer is the little logo for Creative Cloud, Adobe's Creative Cloud. And you need to update. And I know one of, somebody in, I'm going to pick on you here. I know somebody in here hadn't updated. And you're paying for CC, and there's always updates. And so there was just one this week. So if you didn't go in and update this week, you'll want to because there was a new slider added. It's called the texture slider, and it's right here. Um, right there. And so you will want to update because this is a really cool new feature, and it's the first new slider that we've gotten probably in about four or five years. And so it does some really good work. So. You will want to update. Now, if you don't have that, if you're a Mac user, it's kind of up minus sitting in a bar up at the top of the screen. So I have a little icon up here that I can click on up here. And this PC had one kind of down in this area. If you don't see an icon for any reason, you can go up to the help menu, which is up here, right here, click on it. And right there, it says updates. So I'll go ahead and click on it here. Oh, you know, I'm not connected to the internet, so I'm not sure. Could you just click 
Oh, it opened on your screen. Can you push it over to me? Yep. So it'll open this. Uh, it looks like this. It may open and it might look. Sometimes I think it opens. No, that's not the one. It opens looking like something else. Not this open. one. I think this is usually the way it opens for me. But you just want to be on apps. And you'll see some of these say you can install. So this has never been installed on this particular computer. You may have one of, the, <coughs> one of those. And I updated this today. So I should have probably left it, but I didn't want to update. This says open. It's ready to go. If it has an, an update, it will say update, and it will be blue, just like these install buttons. And if it says update, then you can go ahead and update. Um, and you can decide what you want to install. I don't have all the offer, the things that are available to install installed on my computer either. Um, but I want to tell you, you should keep accurate or you know use it if you're paying for it. Keep up to date, and that's how you do that. They did just change the name so it doesn't throw you. Um, this is now Lightroom Classic, not Lightroom Classic CC. And the other one is just plain Lightroom instead of Lightroom CC. And so. None of which do I think is the right name for this. I think this one should be Lightroom CC, and then they should have named the other one something else. But Lightroom they didn't Walmart. ask me. Huh? Yeah, they didn't ask me. They didn't ask me, so I didn't have any say in that. Um, and then I told you about the new tool. So let's talk about some fun little things that you can do. Um, and that is doing some customizing to your interface here. We haven't shown you some of these things that can be done in case you don't know. If you hover on any of these panels on the right, left, or at the bottom, you can change the size of them. You'll see the double arrow over here on the right when I hover right next to the edge. And you can click on it and you can make it wider or you can make it narrower. You can only go so far, that's as narrow as it goes, and that other was as wide as it goes. But know that you can do that. So if you have the film strip open down here at the bottom, you can hover on that, and if you want it to be super big, you can do that. That's as wide as it goes. Well, if I can stay on it, we'll be all right. I guess I'll click and leave it open so it stays there. So, Hover over that, yes, there you go. And Or you can bring it down and it gets really teeny tiny. But you know, honestly, I need to, if I'm gonna have it there, I need to see what those pictures are. So mine is sort of somewhere in between. Mine's kind of in the middle. So I can kind of see what's there, but it's not taking as much uh, screen real estate up. And I also generally keep mine closed and only open it when I need it. All right, so you can do it to the left panel just like you did to the right. You cannot change the size of this one. It's either open or it's closed. All right, so that's that. But let's look at, let's, let me close this up for a second. So if yours is open, you can go ahead and close it. But what I would like you to follow along with me, if you could, on this. And you'll see the words here. And if you just go to the left of any of these words on this side, and you do a right click, you will get a menu pop open. And you'll see five options, and you'll notice it says solo mode and it has a check mark. If I uncheck that, and I will for this demo, um, now if I open the basic panel and I want to come down and now I want to work in the HSL panel and I want to work in the tone curve, you'll notice these all stay open. And so if you're wanting to work down here and you've worked in this one and then you work in the next one, and now you want to go all the way back up to the basic panel. You got to scroll all the way through those. And that's just can be a hassle if you're back and forth, scrolling back and forth all the time. So you, if you like them all open, then you will want this solo mode unchecked. If you would like to see them close, then you just click on here and it will check that box. And now if I have one panel open and I open another panel, it closes the one. So there's only one open at a time. It's in solo mode. If I click on another one, it closes it, and it only has one open at a time. If you go over to the left panel, we're in the develop module now, and if I close, I'll close this up for now, and if I right click on this one, 
You can see I also have the ability to have solo mode over here, so you can choose that also. For some odd reason, it does not put a check mark on it. Go figure. I have no idea why. It's still closing things up as I click on them. But there's, oh, it did have a check mark on it. Maybe it's my computer. Okay, so I would close them up because I just like to have solo mode. So that's my thing on this one. Let's look at this right hand side again. And I'm going to right click again, open that panel one more time. And you'll notice the top says Customize Develop Panel. I'm going to click on that. It opens a window. You'll see little check marks on the right hand side, and then you'll see all the panels listed that are on the left hand <coughs> on this right hand panel. If you said, I don't ever use one of these, maybe it's calibration, I don't even want to see it, well, all you have to do is uncheck that box. And the next time you start Lightroom, it will not be over here. I leave them there, they don't bother me that much. So, But if it really bothers you, that's how you get rid of them. They don't delete themselves from the software, you just have to know that you can get back in there and turn it on if you want it in some some other time in the future. The other thing that you can do here is you say, well, I use some of these more than others. And so I want all the ones that I use the most at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So you can say, you can click and drag. So maybe you use basic and you want the HSL panel to be second. You can do that. Or maybe you say, I want the detail panel instead of it being here. I want to make sure that it's second. And you can rearrange it into whatever order you want. And I could hit save, what it will do is it'll say, well, relaunch it. It's got to be relaunched before it'll remember that, but you can relaunch it. You can do it now or you can do it later. I'll say later because I'm going to open that back up again. And I'm going to go back into that one more time. And so say you said, well, I really wish I would have just left it in a default order. That's all you got to do is hit default order and hit save, and then it will go back to the way it came to you from the very beginning. Um, if, see where my cursor is out here? It's not on the panel on the right. It's kind of in the window area that's not the image. If I right click here, you will also see where you can customize the color of your background. So if I wanted it to be white, it can be white. If I wanted it to be black, you can choose black. So you can decide what color you want your background color to be. So that's another customization you can make. And now, if you notice on this computer, mine says my name up here, and this one says <coughs> Jay's. And I'll, but um, you can customize this. Yours may just say Lightroom. So let's go in and figure out how you can customize your and put your name up there. Go ahead, change it for Riverbend. That's what I was going to do. So, okay. So you're going to go, okay. So if you are a Mac user, you're going to go to the word Lightroom. Uh, it says Lightroom Classic now. It used to just say Lightroom. Now it says Lightroom Classic up here. So you're going to click, if you're a Mac user, you're going to click on the word Lightroom Classic and it's going to open a menu and you're going to find the word, um, yeah, identity plate. And you're going to click on it, and so it's going to open. For you uh, PC users, you're going to go to the word edit. You're going to go down, and it's identity plate setup. I'm going to open it. We all should be in the same thing. If you could move that window over, it would be great. And mine's going to come here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. For this particular computer, yours might, if you haven't changed it, might say Lightroom in this box. But it, whatever it is, you can have this little arrow. And if I click on it, you have some options. So I could say Lightroom Classic, which might be what yours is on. This was, says your Adobe ID. And that's why it says John Brooks, because his ID, probably when he signs into um, Adobe website, or, and for the CC part, is probably listed as John Brooks. But in our <coughs> case, if we want to just make a personalized, you click on personalized, and it gives you some more boxes at the bottom. So let's look at those. First of all, I have show state and status and activity clicked. There's a check mark there. And this one has used, whoops, I'm hitting something with my thumb again. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Um, so you'll notice that those uh, it says use a style text identity plate. That means you're going to type in whatever you want and you're going to pick a font and you can pick how that font is displayed. Maybe it's, maybe you have options, maybe you don't. It could say bold, italic, something else in here. And you can pick the size. So we'll say that we want this to be River Bend. So I will type in River Bend. Can't type in. And um, now I can pick the font that I want, and you can get fancy, you can get, and then you can change the size. We'll just say 24. Now this little box is color. So right now it's, I can't tell, I think this is gray. It looks gray to me. Maybe it's white, I'm not sure, I think it's gray. Um, if you want it to be blue or pink or green, you can have that. You just click on it, it'll open this, and then you'll find the color you want. You can find any color over here or one that's pre-selected. And then once you, we'll just, well, I don't want to go too crazy. We'll, we'll go with blue. Cool. Yeah, we'll come back to white, probably. We'll say okay. And then um, you can also make, these coordinate with whatever's over here. So you could select the same font. You could use a different font. You can choose whatever style. If it has some options, you can, you know, bold, italic, bold, italic. So when you can decide on the size and then you can even choose your color. Now this first one on the left, there's two color boxes for this one. One of them, the one, I think it's the one on the, we'll say the one on the left is for the one that's highlighted. So when you highlight the word, say, library or, or develop, it'll go to white in this case. If you want it to be pink, you can make it pink. If you, and then the rest of them, when they're not highlighted, would be gray in this case. So you can change that. One could be pink, one could be green, if that's what you want. Uh, let's just go a little back here and let's see. I'll go to white. And once you have it the way you want it, you just say okay. And you can see it's up there. And if you say you don't like it, we'll go back in and change it. Maybe you want a different font. Maybe you want it a different size. Maybe you want Riverbend Photo Video Club. I would say you're putting your name up there. So maybe you want to say Lucy Chapman Photo Photography. You can put whatever you want. Uh, you can put, let's go back here real quick. I'm going to open it back up and show the other option. Maybe instead of just having a name type, you have a logo made. You can put it in. Or maybe you want your picture up there or your grandchildren's picture or whatever. You can do that. It says click here or drag and drop an image into there. So you can go down to locate a file. And then you can pick the file that you want to put in there. Maybe it's under pictures. Maybe it's in here. Nothing in there. And you can find a photo to put in there if you chose to. Or you can drag and drop it in there, and then you would have a little picture of it. So let's cancel out of that. So that's how you put your name up there, if you've ever wondered how that works. And then you can take them out. Oh, so yeah, if you don't want to say you never use map or web or print, you, you can uncheck those. So say you're not going to ever go into do um, the map. So now it's gone. And you can put it back. It doesn't go away. All right, so that's, thank you, Stan. That was good. I didn't uh, realize that. Um, yes. We're going to talk about going into... The grid mode here and we're going to talk about customizing these boxes because you can change these too so if we right click while our cursor is on here go ahead and try it on something you will have this uh, pop up open and we got to go all the way to the bottom and it says view options so i'm going to click on that and it opens a window if you slide that over to me that'd be great so this window pops up where did you go to get the grid mode yeah <laughs> Just in G. Yeah, 
If you don't remember, you'd hit library. And then you can go down to this bottom corner on here too. That's another option down at the bottom panel or that bottom bar on there where it looks like a little grid as opposed to one picture. It looks like you can also click on there. So um, to get this box, you just right click on any one of these images and then it gave you this, uh, the, I, I, if I did it now, it wouldn't do it, but it gave me that drop down and I went to the very bottom of it, view options, and now I'm in this window. Are we all at the same point? Did you I right clicked on the picture, but then left clicked on view options. <laughs> all right, so now we have this open and in there you'll see at the top it says grid view or loop view. We're gonna talk about both of them, but right now let's highlight grid view. And right now, if you look at these cells, they are the expanded cells is what's showing. So this is one option. If you want to see the other option, you see it's compact cells, so you can click on that. And yours may have been that way to begin with. So it's two different options. Um, choose the one you like. We're going to go down a little farther here, and in here it says cell icons. So inside the cell, it tells that you can have certain things checked or not checked, it's flags, thumbnail badges. So those, this is a thumbnail badge right here in this corner. Um, flags, oh, there used to be a flag on this. So now I got clicked off. If there was a flag, it'd be up in this upper left-hand corner. It's right there. Can you see something as I hover over it? it you can also click on it. There, there's the flag. Um, so those are in there. So if we go to the next section, it says compact cell extras. So this is what we're in. We're in compact cell. So if we're going to use this, we can decide what we want to see. This index number is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's kind of white. And if I uncheck it, then they should go away. See, now there's no numbers. So if you like it or you don't like it, you can choose it. Your decision. Um, this one says rotation. So if I hover over these, you'll see little arrows in the corner. That means if it's not rotated right, that gives you the option to turn it. So if you've got a vertical and it's showing horizontally, you can change it there. Or if it's vertical, if you maybe it changed it for you and you didn't want it changed, you can change it back. Um, top label. So this means whatever is at the top. And in this case, it says file name. So this one was called Boat Tour <coughs> 80 or whatever that says. So, but you can change that. If you want it to be something else, there's an arrow here. Look at all the options you have. So you can put any one of those in there that you want. Just click it. Just read the list, decide what you want it to be, and it's going to show up right at the top. I'll leave it as is. And this, this one is, is the bottom label. And if you click on here, you'll have options too. So right now it's set with, um, as we hover over it, you can see the star ratings and, and label, which is this green thing right here. That would be the label. And the star is right there. So if you wanted something different, you can make that choice. Now, maybe you don't want anything to show up on the top of that label or on the bottom, just uncheck the box. And then there's just nothing there. So you can to totally go clean and nothing shows up. We'll put those back. All right, so the next one is expanded cells. So let's go up here. I'm gonna turn that one on so you can see it. So this is the expanded cell. It's just slightly bigger, it takes up a little bit more real estate. I've used this one for a long time, um, but you can also, my thumb is making that get bigger. <laughs> you need to quit doing that. <laughs> um, you want my knife to cut it off? <laughs> I think I need to. Yeah. Um, no, she's cast. trying to avoid surgery. <laughs> I am trying to avoid surgery. Um, all right, so let's look here. Now, if we come down to this next section, it says expanded cell extras. So now here's where we can decide what shows up in the expanded cells. So again, all you have to do is click look at the big list, decide what you want and where you want to put it, and uh, choose what you want and it'll show up. So you don't want it to have the title of the thing, or maybe this one I've <coughs> checked so that folder is showing, this is the folder that it's stored in, this is the name of the print, 
Here's the uh, index number, that number four up there, and then the crop dimension. So that's how many pixels it is. So if you had two of the same image, like we were talking about before, and you couldn't tell which one was sized for club and which one was sized for um, being the original size, this might help you if you look up there. You know, that would tell you that they're different sizes. So if you have this as your on your expanded cell. So um, know that you have options and you can do that. Now let's look at the loop view. So I'm going to go to loop view. Now there's nothing showing on this right now, but let's just talk about what you can have show. And then I'll show you how it works. Um, so you can click on any of these. And again, you have all these options. So you can make it so that it's showing whatever info, oops, information that I want. So it just popped in there. So this one is the default. If you like it, great. If you don't, then you can come up here and change it. And this one says file name and copy name. So I tend to like this one. This one says, this is the file name, Chicago 19. But if I had made a virtual copy, it would say this, then it would be dot copy one. So it tells you if you're on a virtual copy or if you're on the original. There's nothing but the name that's the original and otherwise it'll say copy one, two, three, whatever it happens to be. Capture date, you can see that's when it was captured, time and date. Um, the crop dimensions, if you don't like the crop dimensions, you could come over here and say, oh, I want it to be folder. So now it'll tell you what folder that it's stored in, what Lightroom says it's in. And then here's a whole second set. So you can place it. So you pick what you want the same way. And I'm going to X out of here right now. And you'll see that it's showing up in this window. <coughs> Sometimes it's long enough. It'll say one of these panels is open. Now it's kind of overlapping my image. And so if it's in the way and I don't want it there, I can make it go away. All I have to do is hit the I button. Now, the first time I hit the I button, it shows the first set of information that I had. The second time I hit the I button, it'll go through and show you the second set of information that I had set up for it to show. And the third time I hit it, it will show, it will go away. So it just toggles through the information or nothing. So usually I have mine like this so I can see the full screen without that being up there because it kind of bothers me sometimes. But sometimes I want to know some of the information that I have stored there. So again, I would just click it and find out, oh, okay, I shot it a 20th of a second. That's why it's blurry. I need to do a better job next time. So, I mean, it's a learning thing. If you think, why is this too dark? We'll look and see what your settings were. Why is it, uh, you know, am I not got enough uh, depth of field? Look and see what your settings were. So it's a good learning tool. Any questions about that? So that's customizing your menu to what we've covered. And we'll cover a little bit more of it next week, but I want to get into some other things tonight. Yeah.